Uh, I'm filling in today, as some of you, most of you probably know, but in case we have any visitors today, and if we do have a visitor, I would appreciate if you guys would sign our guest registry so we could pray with you and, and fellowship with you, hopefully, in the future. Uh, our pastor is out. He's had a medical condition. He's in the hospital. He's a uh, pretty serious condition, but he looks like he's coming through it. Praise God. And uh, uh, for the camera's sake, I'm not going dis to uh, dis divulge what's going on, but just please keep him in your prayer. And uh, in case anybody doesn't know, my name is Mike. I'm here and filling in today and uh, for those out in camera world, too. <laughs> Um, I'm going to pray right now. Father God, I just pray for our pastor, Lord. I thank you for the medical care and the, the, the men that you put, and women that you put forth to take care of them. Lord, we've seen many healing miracles in this church, and we're asking a special miracle upon our pastor today, Lord. And, I, and I, Lord, I just ask that you help me not to be a castaway and bring forth your word, um, Lord, and uh, that it doesn't go away um, like scattered seed, that it will take hold and that the, everyone here would uh, use it to help exercise it to help grow in their faith and maybe use it as a medicine. And I'll thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, the title of my message today, I titled The Double-Minded Man. And uh, <laughs> it was funny, I was just sitting here and I still, you'd think I'd be used to it, but my heart starts palpitating and I get nervous to come up here and talk and uh, and so that's my fleshly mind not letting God and I had to keep praying God keep me uh, calm here and uh, so I can bring forth the word and it's definitely uh, <laughs> I hopefully it doesn't happen to you all but it happens to me still you're gonna see who it happens to all right I'm gonna start with uh, James chapter 1 James chapter 1 You don't have to follow along if you don't want to. I use quite a bit of gospel today. I let, let God do the talking, I always say. Uh, starting in chapter 5, I mean, uh, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and umbraideth not, and it shall be given unto him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. I don't know, I'm sure Brother Jerry was talking about the ship. I've been on a ship fishing in 20 footers and you're like this way and you're this way, you know, and you're tossed about. Let me tell you, I, I had fun. Some people get seasick, but I, it was actually a good day fishing, actually. But it, it's it was just pretty, you could, you could see how uh, the guys uh, that were in the boat with Jonah <laughs> We're fearing for their lives. You think of that sometimes. For let no man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So we, we say today he's bipolar. You're, you know, that's the term nowadays. That's double-minded. You know, think about it. I heard Brother, Brother Paul speak of the polar area. Well, there's two poles. There's the North Pole and the South Pole, and we're bipolar. Our brain has its two sections. You know, I don't know why, but that's the way it is. That's the way God made us wonderfully. So it's, you know, it comes down to we have a fleshly mind and we have a spiritual mind, and, and you got to overcome one, definitely. you got to work in the spirit, as we're going to see. So it's, you know, it's easy to just say that. So let's... Uh, Let's identify the problem. So, you know, when you're an auto mechanic, you're, you're hey, my car's not running right. What, what's going on? So we got to, we got to, first of all, hey, well, what's going on? Well, the, the engine's knocking. We're going to look at the, the symptoms. Um, turn with me, if you will. It's, uh, I'm going to read about, um, in First Kings, chapter 18, we're going to read about a little bit of Elijah here. First Kings, chapter 18. I'm going to start in 17. First Kings chapter 18, verse 17. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, and Ahab said unto him, Art thou that he troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house. And ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Balaam's a fertility or sun god or a nature god. In fact, I was doing some things on the internet, and there's still people in the U.S. that do it, and even in Israel to this day. 
and you know actually if you think about it people who follow horoscopes and all that's that's that same kind of thinking that's what's going on you may not you may think oh let me just check my horoscope but you're going down that road and God doesn't like it and I'm just letting you that's a freebie right now now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal 450 and the prophets of the groves 400 which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together in Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto the people and said, How long halt be between two opinions? Now look at the word halt. In some versions it means falter or waver. Remember James, nothing wavering. Yeah. Two opinions, two minds. You know, they got, they got two. They want to worship the sun god, but oh, let's sacrifice the god at the evening service. You think God's going to take a back seat to that? I don't think so. If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And all the, and all the people answered him not a word. And it's funny. Uh, I'm going to say a brother this morning told us that he, he told his son some biblical advice today and his son utter, uttered not a word because he was under conviction. So these people didn't utter a word because they were under conviction. Then said Elijah unto the people, I even I remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. The majority rules? Is that what today, just because you're... Is that what's going on? Majority rules? Oh, we believe this way, so let's change what the, how the church does things. No, God, let God be God, and not what people's minds are. So here's the contest. So let them, therefore, give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it into pieces, and lay it on the wood, and put no fire under it. And I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on the wood, and put no fire under it. And call ye upon the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord, and and the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It's well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it, for ye are many, and call upon the name of your gods and put no fire under it. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and they called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice nor any that answered, and they leaped upon the altar which they were made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. See, he's confident now. He's working with God. He's able to, he, he mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is God. Either he is talking or he's pursuing or he's in a journey or peradventure he sleepeth and he must be awakened. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after the manner with knives and lances until the blood gushed out of them. And it came to pass when midday was passed and they prophesied until the time of the offering that the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor answer nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto the people, Come near unto me and all the people now came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as could contain two measures of seed. And he put the wooden altar, and he cut the bullock into pieces and laid them on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt offering, burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, Do it a second time. And he did it a second time. And do it a third time. And he did it a third time. And the water ran about the altar and he filled the trench also. And it came to pass at the time of the offering, this evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and I have done these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that the people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that is and thou hast turned their heart again, turned back their heart again. And repentance, that's repentance. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and looked up the water that was in the trench. Lightning couldn't do that. You know that's from above and that's why it, it, it vaporized the rock and everything. That's totally amazing. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and, and then said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let none of them escape. And they took them. And Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. 
so we'll get into that later. He prayed for rain. He, he, there was no rain for three and a half years. You know, a lot of us say, oh, it's going to rain tomorrow. Well, you know, into one's life a little rain must fall. That They were hoping that there, a little rain would fall on their lives. So I guess it's how you look at things sometimes. But And we'll get to the message for another day is it didn't rain for three and a half years. That's like tribulation. So... Okay, so we see that here's, here's uh, Elijah. He's on top of the world. He's got victory. God's driving the boat right now. Uh, so, but then uh, let's do you look at 1 Kings chapter 19. Verse 1, what's going on here? And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. And Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah say, So let the gods do to me and more also if I make not this life as one of them by tomorrow. And when he saw that he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left the servant there, but left his servant there, but he himself went a day's journey. He tucked his tail and ran. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die and said, It's enough now, O Lord, take away my life for I am not better than my father's. So he took his focus off of God and he got in the driver's seat and God was in the back seat and here's where it happens when you get troubles, when you, when you, when you start taking over. What does Satan say? I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. So, so there's, there's some of the symptoms of why maybe our life doesn't go well sometimes. But we'll see the rest of the story. So uh, the next thing we see is God tells Elijah to go pick Elijah to go pick out Elijah, what we've been call an understudy, an intern, an apprentice, we would call him today. In First Kings uh, in chapter 19, verse 19. So he departed thence and found Elijah, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. That's quite a tractor. If you I've seen, you know, people plow, I've heard the previous pastor that was here before. He plowed with one mule. This guy's plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. That's, you could pull a tractor trailer with that. That's quite a yoke if you think about it. And that's actually significant that it was 12, I'm sure you'll know. And, and he with the 12, and uh, Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee, I. And he said unto them, Go back, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took the yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave it unto the people, and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. So he, he burned his bridges. He's like, you know what? He's right. I'm not going back. I'm getting rid of all my stuff from the world, and I'm following Elijah because I believe that he's called of God and he's a righteous man. So he put self aside. And at, but at first he didn't, but then he, he repented and he did. So then, uh, so then later on we see... Uh, you don't have to turn there, but I don't have time to get into that. But in Second Kings chapter two eleven, Elijah is taken up in a whirlwind, so he he must have did something right that God just took him right up, you know. So um, turn to G James chapter five. There was some change there since he was under the juniper tree, uh, saying you know in depression. You think about it. <laughs> That happens to us. We, we look at our circumstances and we get depressed. We get anxiety. Uh, you know, in all fairness, you like David we're going to talk about later, he's worried about his life. You know, what do, how many of us in our lives have, you know, we do get diseases, which is very similar, you know, dying of cancer or worried about cancer. And, you know, that's enough, Lord, take me home. But you got to keep going until God's done with you. Yeah. Chapter 5, verse 17. Elias, which is Elijah, was, uh, if you translate it, was a man subject to like passions as we are. He, he, he laced up his sandals the same way we do. He was a human being just like we were. And he prayed earnestly that it may not rain. And it rained not on the earth by a space of three and a half years. 
And maybe that's what we need today. We were kind of talking about that. Maybe we need some kind of tribulation in our earth to bring pat people back to God because everybody's got it fat and sassy right now and they're off. They don't need God. They got a credit card. If, if you know, nobody knows what it's like to worry about where your next meal's coming from and these people didn't have rain for three and a half years, we might get away with it like out in San Diego because we have huge conglomerated food. But what if God brought no rain for three and a half years? Now you would have to live by faith and you would have to seek God and not your own let him be in the driver's seat and he prayed again and the earth gave its rain and the earth brought forth her fruit so you see he's just a, he was a man just like us that God chose to use he was, he, 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 so what made him special it's probably the way he followed God and he didn't live in the flesh although you see he did have some issues with that uh, turn to Luke chapter 9 Luke chapter 9. We're still looking at some of the symptoms here. Luke chapter 9. I'm going to start in 57. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee wherever you go. Sounds like Peter, right? And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home, at my house. Kind of sounds like Elijah. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. So what does that mean? What, when your hand is on the plow, you're digging up the earth. And what are you digging up the earth for? To plant seed. You're, you, that's your job. Once you've been given the commission, which any saved, born-again person is given the commission to go preach the word to every living, and to live it, but to most of all, but to give the word, which is seed. And once you've given that, been given that commission, if you start looking back and going back to your old ways, you're not fit. You're not, maybe, you've one of two things, either you're not born again or you've backslidden tremendously. Do you know, we, I touched on it a little bit. There's, there's two things, you know, God can do everything. There's two things that God can't do. One is, of course, God can't sin. But the second thing God can't do is he can't be in the back seat of your life. He's going to flee. If you're driving the car, he's going to say, see ya. This guy's going to make a mess. I'm out. <laughs> but if you let God in the driver's seat, Amen. Then you might see things Amen. go your way. Amen. Maybe not your way, his way, but it's going to be a lot smoother sailing. That's for sure. So we've identified the problem. And that's it. You're going to have to come back next week because I'm going to give you the remedy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully I have enough time for the remedy <laughs> um, actually um, Samuel Clemens um, he made a statement he was actually talking about the weather but it's so appropriate to I see things happening today he said he's talking about the weather but he says everybody complains about it but nobody does anything about it you know <laughs> so you know what do we do? We go, we go complain to our neighbor when we got a problem, or we complain to this one until we have nowhere to go. And then, oh, yeah, let's let's bring it to God. You know, uh, let's turn to. Uh, I'm going to be in Psalms quite a bit because, of course, David was a man after God's own heart. So we're going to go to uh, Psalm 55 to start. And just keep your fingers in the Psalms. I'll be going back and forth there. If you want, you can listen. Psalm 55, chapter 1. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend to me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. Got David's crying out. He, he's complaining to the one that can do something about it. Not to his neighbor, not even another Christian. Yeah, okay, brother, I'll pay, pray for you, but... 
I can't help you out of your situation. Yeah. And it, yeah. uh, let's go to 61. 61, 1 and 2. Hear my cry, O Lord. Attend unto my prayer. Sounds kind of haughty, huh? He's like, hey, listen to me now, listen to me now. But God likes that, apparently. God wants you. He knows, hey, he's, he's not realizing who can do something about it. I wonder when Mike was going to get there. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And, and that rock is Christ, correct? <laughs> that rock of... But your complaint can go upon deaf ears. Let's go to uh, uh, 66, Psalm 66. Psalm 66. Eighteen. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which has not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's, we should diagnose the problem. We know where to bring it. We know which garage to bring it to. Let's, uh, let's see what we can do to fix it. Go to... Uh, you don't have to go to all of these. I'm going to be skipping around, but if you would like to, just in case you need to know where it is and remember where it is in the Bible, go to, uh, let me see here. Where are we going? Where are you going to go to Isaiah 26? Isaiah 26. Uh, verse 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Philippians chapter 2. Stay focused on the Lord. See, Elijah took his eyes off and look what happened. He was under the juniper tree. <laughs> Where was I? Philippians chapter 2, verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, not, not double-minded, like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Yeah. Let nothing be done through strife and, or vainglory, but in loneliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than himself, right. than themselves. Look not every man unto his own things, but every man also unto the things of others. So does that mean be a busybody? No. You know what a busybody is, right? I heard a man tell me this once. It's a self-imposed superintendent over other man's matters. That's what a busybody. But this is saying, listen, if a brother out here has a need and you can fulfill it, help him out. You know, you don't have to run his life, but you know, hey, help, help out a brother, whether it's spiritually or, or physically, he has a need and you can help him out. That's what he's saying. Let this, me, let this mind be in you, which is also in Jesus Christ, the mind of Christ. That's how you stay focused. That's how you fix your woes. Go to Galatians, which I'm stealing a little, little bit of brother... Paul's, we're just ahead of where he's going to be, and I'm sure he's going to do a well justice into it. So if you, if you have the mind to, and you want to come Friday nights, we're in the book of Galatians now. It's better than what we used to do on Friday nights, and we sit there for an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, and we even go two hours sometimes, but we're having fun. We're happens to be in Galatians chapter 5 now. Uh, and as a matter of fact, Brother John this morning was a little bit in Galatians. I'm going to start with chapter 5 and verse 16. Then I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 17, for the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to another, so you cannot do the things that you would. 25, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So don't just talk the talk, walk the walk. And, but the only way you're going to do that is if you let God be in the driver's seat. 2 Timothy 1, 7. 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Back to Psalms 56, 3 and 4. 
What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do to me. And, and, and that's easy to say. Yeah, I'm worried about this guy picking at me and work or whatever. But right now, he was encompassed by the Philistines right now, fearing for his life. I don't know if that's happened to anybody here. There may be some that were in the service that definitely could have happened to. But that's really living by faith. When he writes this, <laughs> these are words that he said while he was encompassed by the Philippines. Psalm 55, 22. Cast your burdens upon the Lord as he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer, suffer the righteous to be moved. Notice he said the righteous. What makes you righteous? Your faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, turn to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Uh, I'm going to go to verse 12. Therefore, brother, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live under, after the flesh, you shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So mortify your deed. What does a mortician do? He takes care of the dead and deeds are works. So so these are dead works. So if you put those dead works aside, you can let the Spirit lead you. Or you need to be dead to self if you're saved. Or, or, or maybe you're not saved because you're not the sons of God. So, so for as many are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. So for in order to you... For you to be led by the Spirit, you definitely have to be born again. You have to be saved. 8.1 yeah. There is now, therefore, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So that's telling you <laughs> there's no condemnation to those that are saved. But if you're here today and you're not saved, you need Jesus Christ. And then you can be led by the Spirit. And your life will not be wavering. But, you know, you can't call upon the Lord unless you're saved. And in order for you to be saved, you need to call upon the Lord and ask Him to save you. And that's the only prayer that the Lord is going to hear, that you call upon Jesus Christ for eternal life. Or even when you are struggling and you are backslidden, that's the only way you're going to get back to be where God is in the driver's seat when you want God to order your life. So if you're here and you're backslidden, or maybe you're not saved and you want to learn about eternal life, you need to come forward when we have the invitation. And I, I, can, I or the elders can tell you how to be saved. Um, John 1 12 but as many as received them to him gave he the power to become the sons of God even to those that believe on his name so you need to believe on his name for eternal life you can't believe yourself you can't believe on your words you have to believe on Jesus Christ for eternal life and, but you can't do any of that unless there is a repentance. You need to be, you need to realize that you're a sinner and that you cannot, God's not going to hear you as it says, if I bear iniquity in my heart, we all going to bear it, but we have the blood of Jesus Christ covering yeah. that blood and we become justified just as if we'd never sinned when God looks upon us. And I, thank you, Jesus, for doing that all. We can't even understate what Jesus has done to us and, you know, for us, to us, all of the above. And, and it's amazing. I'm thinking back of Elijah <laughs> When he was, you know, telling to his gods, you know, hey, you know, pick a number when you're at the deli. He's busy right now. You know, basically, God hears us when we are in trouble immediately, whether it's in traffic or whatever. Thank God that we don't have to wait like they had to wait, which is no God at all. But he's there for us always.